start this afternoon and, uh, and just talk about uh, Dr. Goodhart a little bit. Um, David Lee suggested that, uh, the president, the chairman of ICAK for many years, has suggested that when we teach the class, uh, those of us who are ICAK instructors, uh, that we just say a few words every time about Dr. Goodhart, just you know, pay tribute to him. And I do that all the time anyway, but I just thought I'd take a moment and, and, um, and just speak a few words about Dr. Goodhart. As you know, passed away last March 5th at the age of 89. Practiced up until the June before when he had a, a TIA, and then, uh, but still was practicing pretty much full time up until that time at the age of 88. So he did pretty well. Um, all wish we could practice till we're 88 or 89. Um, but, you know, Dr. Goodhart, as I, you know, I grew up living next door to him. I have a lot of stories I can tell. Here's a picture that was taken of Dr. Goodhart. This is Richard Friedman. Richard Friedman was, when I was practicing in Michigan and was pra and teaching with Dr. Goodhart in Michigan, was a representative of one of the nutrition companies. Uh, it was with Standard Process then, later with Biotics, and now with another company. And Richard and George used to play tennis together. This is at the Gross Point Hunt Club. This is George wearing his, his um, Olympic sweatsuit. And as you know, George was the first Olympic chiropractor in 1980 at Lake Placid and would have gone to Moscow in the Olympics, but because of political reasons, we didn't go to Moscow. The United States didn't go to Moscow. So Richard had this picture taken. He was kind enough to send it to me. So I just kind of cropped Richard out. I give him <laughs> But I give him credit for it. <laughs> he knows I do this. <laughs> but George was, um, was kind of bigger than life to some of us. And I grew up living next door to him. So he's kind of like my next door neighbor. And then he was like this guy that could fix me and my family. And then he was this guy that could teach me everything I knew, or almost everything I knew. One time he's telling me something and with a group of people. And I said, how come you never told me that? And he looked at the group of people and says, well, I taught Wally everything he knows, but I didn't teach him everything I know. <laughs> <laughs> so we were, we were um, in the office in Detroit early on. It was an unbelievable experience to be able to practice with Dr. Goodhart. And, um, and for five years, I worked with him there until I kind of went out on my own and seek my fortune and so on in North Carolina. But um, for five years, I would be able to ask him any question. He'd be able to answer almost every question I asked him. Before that, when I was a student at National, I would go anywhere he was in the Midwest. And he went to Peoria. He went to Davenport. I would go there and take his seminars with him. And um, I would get on the plane with him in, at O'Hare right here. And he would be flying through Detroit and have to fly to Peoria or Davenport. He would fly through and make a connection. Now, in those days, airfares were on a whole different scale than they are now. And there was a first class was a little bit more than coach, not a lot. And he always flew first class. And um, my grandparents were patients of his, and he helped them a lot. I think my grandmother had headaches for 30 years, and he fixed them, something like that. So they were very grateful. So they were able to pony up the airfare so that I could fly with him from Chicago to Peoria or Chicago to Davenport when he taught those seminars. So since we grew up next door to each other, he taught me how to ski. And so we'd get on the airplane, and we'd start to um, uh, meet each other in the airport, and we'd start to talk. And we'd finally stop talking when I got off the airplane in O'Hare, and he went to his gate, and I went back and went to my house when I was a student at National. But we had these like weekends together, which was fabulous. But the very first one that I went on him with, I, I came out to O'Hare, I met him at the airport, and um, we got on the airplane uh, after about a three-hour delay. And it was a terrible stormy, rainy night in the Midwest, and it was the first time George had ever been speaking in Davenport. And I learned then that George's father, who was a chiropractor before him, had been almost like mortal enemies with B.J. Palmer. <laughs> and um, they had, you know, B.J. was kind of like in a straight upper cervical kind of mode, and his father was what we, people would call a mixer, I guess, back in those days even. And they apparently had um, not very fond feelings for each other. On the other hand, Dr. Gart's father and Major Bertrand de Jeanette, founder of SOT, were best of friends. In fact, George um, recalls, um, uh, when he was a little kid, Dijonette coming over at his father's house. His father had a home office, and they spent a lot of time together early on before Dijonette moved to Nebraska. Dijonette started in practicing in Detroit. So um, I you know, heard all those stories you know, about him growing up when I was growing up. But the, um, we got to Davenport, and it was um, like 10.30 at night. Now, in Davenport in 1970, whatever it was, three or something, probably maybe still, they kind of roll up the sidewalks about 8 o'clock on Friday night. You know, it's like there's nothing happening at all. And um, so we got to Davenport in this terrible rainstorm. And we had a car rented, but the car rental place went home at 8 o'clock at night. 
So we couldn't find any agents or any. The airport was deserted. This plane finally came in late. We got our luggage. And finally, somehow, after searching for 10 or 15 minutes, we found that this is a very small airport at the time. We found that there were some keys left for him for renting the car. So we got in the car and started driving. Now, we had directions. But one of the things that Dr. Goodhart wasn't terrific at <laughs> was finding directions. Um, and so we were searching all around for this place we were supposed to go across the river from where the airport was into, into, I think we were staying in Bettendorf. I think it was a Bettendorf Holiday Inn. But we had to get across the river, across the river, and it's thundering and lightning, pouring down rain. And we're driving up and down streets trying to find the place that we are. And we get completely lost, totally completely lost. And I don't know what time it is. It's about 11, 10, 11, 15. We've been going for like close to 45 minutes now. And all of a sudden, we cross the street. And it's um, the street we're supposed to be on. And, and we see the Holiday in the distance, and we get there. We get into the room. It's 11.30 at night. And George says, I feel like some fruit. I want some fruit. So he calls on room service. Well, room service closed at 10 or something. He says, you know, he says, let's go out and see if we can find an all-night fruit market. <laughs> <laughs> we spent 45 minutes all over at the airport. So I, I said, oh, I'm exhausted. I said, OK, I'll go. You know? And so we start heading out. And we get lost again. <laughs> Totally lost, driving around. And all of a sudden, we come across the street, and it says Brady Street. I said, turn here. That's Brady Street. I know that. I saw that before. That's the main drag in Davenport. Turn here. We can find our way home from there. I remember how we, if we went up to Brady Street, and then we took a right, we'd, we'd get there. And um, so we get on Brady Street, and he's driving up Brady Street. And we get past Palmer College, which those of you know the locale, know where it is, past Palmer College. And all of a sudden, he says, I think I'm going to look down this street here. It's like, no, 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 just go straight ahead and turn with <laughs> We've been lost twice so far for long periods of time. He says, it's a side street. I think I'm going to turn around the street here. I think they have an all-night fruit market here. <laughs> he turns down the street. We go down two blocks, and there in the corner is, is like Joe's 24-hour fruit market. <laughs> it was an all-night fruit market. The title was 24-hour fruit market. We went in and got our fruit. That was like amazing, you know? It's like, that's just what he did. He had this great intuition, and, and things just would happen to him. So we finally did find ourselves back to Brady Street pretty easily and get back to the hotel. But that, that same time, that same weekend, was the first time he'd uh, been there. And he, he kept saying when we were lost, I think this is BJ's spirit keeping me from finding the place or something. I think BJ's mad at my father, and he's getting back at it through me. So when we finally found the fruit market, he goes, take that, BJ. <laughs> He didn't say those words, but that was the idea, you know? <laughs> so um, I have a lot of stories I could tell like that about his amazing abilities and his intuition. I'll tell you one more, and a lot of you heard this story. It was when I was early on in practice in Detroit. And I ran a lab test on a patient, sort of a basic profile. And there was a test on it that I'd ever seen before. It was called the GGTP. That stands for gamma glutamyl transpeptidase. It's a liver enzyme test, but it was never used before. I didn't learn about it in school. In fact, it just been added after you know, I was in practice. The first few profiles, they didn't put it in. All of a sudden, they added in with the SGOT and the SGPT, which is the ALT and AST now. But they had the gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, GGT, or in those days called GGTP. And so I didn't know what it meant. And it was elevated patient. So I went to Dr. Gutt. I said, uh, this is elevated here. I said, can you tell me what it means? He looked at me and says, no. He says, I don't know what it means. And I, I said, and it's a brand new test. He didn't know about it. I said, I'm shocked. I'm shocked for two reasons. First, I'm shocked, because every time I ever asked him before ever, he answered it correctly. I said, I'm shocked for two reasons. One, because you don't know the answer. And two, because you'd admit it. <laughs> and he said to me, Wally, he said, I'm not God, to the best of my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my man, Dr. Goodhart. <laughs> And he really did have some of those tributes, uh, some of those attributes that were unlike anyone else that we've ever known. And we'll miss him greatly, but we continue to tell stories about him and continue to use the work that he taught us. And that's what I'm trying to do this week, which I've always tried to do as I teach. And uh, that's the man right there I grew up next door to. So in my morning, we just say a few words about him and have a few laughs, but just see what he'd like us to do. <laughs>